Hey everybody, I wanted to show you a really quick way that you can uh, overcome something from the Scopus database. Uh, when you do searches using publish or perish from Scopus, you'll see here that you only get the first author uh, in the results. So this is a little um, limiting, well, and it's wrong. Um, and I use an application called Research Rabbit, which is artificial intelligence. And what it does is it allows me to import the results from Publish or Perish, pop them into Research Rabbit. It will match the papers using its, um, its artificial intelligence. And I can then export from Research Rabbit. Um, I can actually export directly into Zotero, which is my preferred source. But in this video, I'm only going to show you how we go from Publish or Perish into Research Rabbit. So first of all, if you haven't already got, uh, if you haven't already got Publish or Perish, housing.com, there's instructions there, there's description of the software. It is essentially a search tool for academics that will work on Windows or on Mac. And I'm not going to teach you how to use it, but essentially, so if I, we're going to do a search, I'm going to, I've started something new, we're going to do a search for Paradox. You, you first of all choose which database you're going to uh, search, but this video is just about Scopus because Scopus has this thing whereby it will only bring back the author's first name. So I'm interested in um, international in uh, international business. I'm not, but I know that's Professor Harzing's subject. And I'm just going to, it, it will, a Scopus will limit us to 200. So we have no choice about that. And here you can see that it's bringing back uh, first names only, first author only. Okay, so this is, this is a limitation of the programmatic interface that Scopus provides for free. So if you notice, I haven't had to register, I don't have a Scopus subscription, but through Publish or Perish, I'm able to interrogate that data source, which is very, very useful and very powerful, um, albeit limited to 200 results. And I can tell you when you're dealing with academic papers, 200 is way more papers than you really ever want to have to deal with. However, we've now got um, let's see, we've got 200 papers. Um, and by the way, the, the, the main purpose of this tool is to see the citation. So there's a paper here that, um, that has been cited nearly 8,000 times. So you can really get to see the top papers. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take, let us say, the top 25 of those. And I can right click. Notice they only have one author, and I'm presuming many of them have more than one. And I'm going to save the results. And I can save it as um, almost anything I, I like, really. Um, but I'm actually going to go for um, uh, the RIS, R A S format. And it just it's asking me to save that somewhere. And I'm going to save that as Scopus. 25 um, paradox, which I couldn't spell correctly. Scopus 25 paradox. And then over to Research Rabbit. Now, Research Rabbit, you get through researchrabbitapp.com sign up. Everything is free. Well, I, I would urge you to donate to help to support Publish or Perish. Um, a small donation would be appreciated, I'm sure. Um, this one, um, again, it's free. And I've created a new collection uh, um, up here, or a new category, excuse me, um, called Paradox. So if I go into Paradox and I create a new collection, so this is going to be the Scopus 25 collection. And then it gives these three dots, and that's the opportunity for me to rename it because I made a slight mistake. That should be Scopus 
I click on that and there's a great big button there that says add papers and that of course is exactly what I want to do once again I can import directly from Zotero but we haven't I haven't got any papers yet on Paradox in Zotero so maybe that will be uh, maybe that'll be the next thing that I show you so I've got the RIS file just pick that up here now this one is limited to 100 papers at a time so if you have more than 100 papers, what you have to do is open up the, the RIS file or the bibtex file, whatever it is, in, in Notepad, and then you have to break it up into 100 results at a time. But again, this is a massive quantity of data if you're dealing with a literature review. So you generally don't want to be dealing with that much data. Um, or, if you, or if you are, then I would suggest you do it this way. So export 100 at a time from here. Now, where Research Rabbit is really strong is it's got this artificial intelligence that does matching. So do you see it's working on the, the DOI, that's the, the academic index uh, reference, and it's saying I can't find a DOI in the data that you uploaded, but I think it's this one or this one, and all you have to do is you just have to match it. So this is the AI working and it's really very I find it very powerful so you just say which one it is um, distance still matters the hard reality this I notice happens a lot is very often if there's initial capitalization um, that's all that throws it okay so there was just two that we had to match with AI uh, that's all set that's all done um, and now you can see that I've got my papers here here they all are with all of the names, do you see? So now what I can do is, so again, I use Zotero. So what I personally would do is sync that to Zotero. I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, well, in fact, I, I see no reason why I can't do that. So if I stick to the same name, so that is Scopus 25 on Paradox. So that will go off and sync to my Zotero collection. Or, of course, you could simply do select all, which I think I probably should have done before I synchronized it. Let's say resync with Zotero. And you, <laughs> and you can export it to uh, here. I, I quite like the Riz. So if I export it to Riz now, so that's going to um, that's going to chuck it out to that. That'll be fine. I'll just go with that, and then I'm going to open Riz. Oh, I'm going to open Riz. Oh, it wasn't quite ready. Um, I'm going to show it in the folder if I can find it. Downloads. So there's the there's the Research Rabbit export. So I'm going to open it with Notepad. Open with Notepad. So there are better apps than this, but Notepad is the one that everybody's bound to have. And you can see this is the RIS format. Um, and, and what I wanted to show you is there. So there we've got the both authors. So AU is the code for author. So we've now got this with authors Okay, so there's five authors. I've one of the things that I've noticed, and you can just sort this out in your bibliography, in your bibliograph uh, software, is sometimes it adds uh, names in different formats, the same name in different format. So um, I'm not sure if that is actually the same person or not. The initial is different, but sometimes it just looks like the the, the same name put in twice. Uh, there, you can see that that one. So, uh, and you'll sort this out in, in Zotero or whatever else that you're using. Obviously, the, the RIS format, you can just import it straight into, into Zotero. Um, let's have a, I'm interested to see what's happened in my copy of Zotero now. Let's see where that has turned up. There it is. So it's turned up there. It's created a new collection. Let me just hide some of these other files for you. Um, it's turned up. It's created a new a new folder here. Um, here they all are, and you can just see there are the authors. Um, it's included the abstracts. It's gone off and got the abstracts for me as well, which is really, really powerful, really useful. So 
maybe in the next video, I'll show you how I code some of these um, using NVivo. So I can I can code just on these um, on these abstracts. So there it is, all beautifully done. Um, nice and huge thanks again to Professor Harzing for for making this software available for us. It's absolutely brilliant.